<clears throat> yeah, good afternoon and uh, welcome to welcome to Baegun's diary this afternoon. So I'm going to have with me uh, the presidential hopeful Omoyele uh, Shoure with us this afternoon. So as promised, he is going to join us uh, in about a minute or two. Then uh, you can drop your questions in the comment section. We'll pick questions uh, randomly about his ambition and uh, every other thing you may want to ask, uh, you know, ask the uh, guest. So then uh, I've got my own questions here that I'm going to also throw at, the, uh, at our guest today. So um, we are also going to open the line for those who are interested, who might want to call from any part of the world uh, to also make contribution or ask questions from Omoyele uh, Shoure uh, this afternoon. So let me... Uh, make efforts uh, and bringing him on now. So one sec. Then share this broadcast as well. Invite your friends. This is an opportunity that uh, we can call our own Mayegun's Diary uh, town hall meeting, online town hall meeting. In this case, uh, it is actually global uh, what do you call it? A uh, global town hall meeting now. The opportunity is here. You can phone in. You can send your question down the, you know, through the comment section. And then Amoye Leshewere will be with us in, uh, in a matter of uh, minutes. So I'm going to share the broadcast. You should share the broadcast as well. Invite your friends. Invite everyone, Nigerians, non-Nigerians, educated, not so educated. I mean young and the old. Let everybody come here now, those who have access to this app, Facebook app, this afternoon. So I'm going to invite him to join us. One sec. Um, anyway, just give me one sec, share the broadcast, and then... Uh, Let's welcome Omoye Shurure into our midst this afternoon. For the second time in about one month. So we we'll have our own town hall meeting. We we'll have uh, the update on uh, his campaign so far. So we'll get to hear from him if the network allows us. And uh, I've just sent an invite to him now. Uh, and I hope... He joins us uh, in just a few minutes. So it's going to be wonderful this afternoon. And I just wish uh, many Nigerians, uh, sorry, oh, many Nigerians will have access to see this video. If not now, possibly those who are going to download the video, put it on their own different blogs or, uh, you know, online uh, to reach more audience. So we'll do as much as possible to make this an interesting uh, afternoon for those who are already in afternoon. So, uh, thank God, uh, our presidential candidate, I mean, aspirant, Omoyele Shoure, is now with us. Then I'm going to bring him on so that we can get this started. Hey, my good general, how Mr. are you? Mr. President. How are you, man? I am here, surviving. <laughs> you know, that's the, that's the word, surviving. I know, you know, uh, like I've always said, uh, there's nothing worse than uh, the disease of survivor because you're either surviving to die or dying to survive. Okay. Yeah, that shouldn't be the case. So it's a pleasure having you back this afternoon. The last time yes. I had you here, we have been uh, truncated most of the time, uh, been tampered with, just because of hopefully maybe how we... Hopefully they are used to the idea that has, whose time has come, and uh, exactly. they won't they be can't. They can't. They can't. And they don't yeah, even they have any of us. Back. They don't even have any of us with that spirit. And that's yes. what the problem is. They don't know how many of us with this spirit. So they can yes. see yeah. the Omoye Lesho, uh, they can see mm -hmm. others, and uh, they can target Omoye Lesho, they can target others. They but they don't know years. the army. 
of those yeah. who are interested in this. And that is where the problem is. So it's a pleasure having you again with us this afternoon. And, Thank uh, you so much. Uh, yeah. We just came back from Port Harcourt, Worry. So if I, look, if I sound a little bit languid and tired, it's because uh, we've been inhaling what they call sweet. I mean, suit. Oh, no. in, and while I was in Port Harcourt, we got sick because they have this thing in the air. They call suit. It's uh, something that comes from the refinery in Port Harcourt. It's dangerous. It's cancerous, but nobody cares about it. So, but I, wow. I, I call it flu from there. So, but we went to Worry yesterday and uh, disrupted Worry, and we're now in Lagos, uh, preparing for Ibora tomorrow and Abia Okuta. It's, it's amazing. It's, it's just amazing to see that uh, we can actually live through a Nigeria where people have become receptive to ideas as opposed to being receptive to just money and money bags. Thank you very much. So we are taking it back everywhere uh, at the end of the day, but we are disrupting first. And the disruption right. is really happening. And day by day, Absolutely. the rank is swelling. And I'm yes. personally impressed. Uh, so many yes. people... Yeah, the position of the camera. God bless you. Yes, I just changed so, the camera. So, so many people have been following. When you started, yes. it all looks like a joke. You know, one of those, so that was, that was one of those bad us. jokes. That was a joke. that but was people are beginning to internet. see, people are beginning to see through it now, the seriousness. That's right. So what yes. we want to achieve with this broadcast this afternoon, uh, are going to be like two, in two places, you know, in two faces. Number one, uh, to let people know that it is possible to change what is bad if we are determined right. to do it. Then yes. the second one is that this is not about those who are currently coming out. It is about those who are keeping quiet, yes. not sure whether to come out or not. Or not. That's very true. So that's what very I want true. us to achieve with this uh, program this afternoon. You have that's led the chat. Well, you have uh, you started. The disruption is going everywhere. And yes. the only thing that could make someone like you genuinely valuable to this course in this generation, to me, is to give you this support, uh, you know, awesomely. So I've got these few questions I've prepared here in order to get started yeah. immediately. You see, yeah. I, I picked uh, some interesting areas. Some of them you have mentioned, but I just want us to be specific this afternoon as well. So I'm going to want yeah. us to talk about the pensioners. I want to talk about the women and children. I want to talk about our justice system, the security system, the food security in Nigeria, you know, industrialization through agriculture. So I'm going to want us to talk about that. Then the employment, I mean, sorry, unemployment in Nigeria. You see, uh, Nigerians are beginning to get tired, if they are not already tired, of uh, all these promises. You know, people know what we want, but we just get all these promises, but nobody really tells us how they are going to get things done. And in this regard, I'm going to want us to use this opportunity to get, you know, an, a sort of a hindsight of what you really have in mind uh, for Nigerians. Maybe they, they should start to understand the, the, the concept of uh, take it back genuinely uh, this time yeah. around, and they can start buying into it. So we'll start with the... Um, the justice system you have been through it you have been maltreated you have been arrested you know yeah. on different charges you have been detained and I had, I had my, so I had many my, horrible underground my cells. Assets confiscated yes you've had your asset you know they've used this if they've used the instrument of the state to fight yeah. you no matter That's how right. how tiny they always say we are they say we are inconsequential so justice system in nigeria we have prisoners without trial we have politicians. You yes. know, when, when ordinary Nigerians are in prison for flimsy or little, little charges, right? Politicians get away with mm -hmm. crime that you can just mention off. So you as, and, you know, I won't say you are agreeing on now. So you as a new entrant into the real battle for the heart of Nigeria, right? What do yes. you have for the justice system in Nigeria? I want to say maybe justice reform, I mean, judiciary reform or something. You know, I, I will start by saying that there's no justice system in Nigeria. Now, what we have found and seen in Nigeria is a just us system. It's a system that is just for the people in power. And the judges, particularly judges, uh, at the lower court system, meaning magistrates and high court system, 
they are just at the service of the highest bidders. And that is why you find, you know, innocent individuals who are raided for what they call wandering. Even offenses are no longer within our own law framework. People get arrested for it. Since I came here, I had to show up at 3 a.m. at the police station, Area F, because a guy that I sent to buy me food in the GR area of Ikeja was arrested and, you know, swept into what they call the Yahoo Yahoo Boys sweeps that they do. They just look at people and they look at your profile based on what you wear, how you look, and they arrest you. So by 3 a.m., I had to go to the station to bail out one of the guys. And when I got there, I was shocked. They said, well, we arrested him so that we can find out whether he's Yahoo boy or not. And I said, what is the basis for arresting somebody in Nigeria? Well, they said, you know, he was wearing a hooded shirt. <laughs> can you mm -hmm. believe that? So I said, so if somebody is wearing a hooded shirt, does it automatically translate to being a criminal? They had no, no, no response. The DPO later came. His grass was that we have no respect for the police. And I had to explain to him, say, if you want respect as Nigerian police, you got to stop doing the beating of criminals. I said, during the military era, you were beating students up who were fighting for democracy. After that, you have placed yourself at the disposal of even girlfriends of politicians that are carrying their back. How do you want people to respect you? Mm. And at that point, I introduced myself to him. I said, I'm going to be the president of Nigeria next year. And you better get used to the idea that there has to be police reforms. Mm. We were also coming from worry. And I'm telling the story that when you talk about the justice system, you talk about how people get arrested, how they get trapped within the system, mm -hmm. and how they don't get justice. We're getting from, from uh, Potako to worry on the, what they call the East, I think it's the East-West Highway. Uh, or the, you know, yes. Yeah. And everywhere there's a police checkpoint. You find a big crater, ball, I mean, uh, uh, hole on the wall, crater on the, on the, on the on the on the highway. Road, road, road it's as if the police intentionally dig <laughs> crater so that they can create so that they can set up a uh, roadblock. A roadblock, yeah. You know Sorry uh, comrade, can you help us balance that your camera properly? We keep uh, missing the every time you move, okay. yeah. I think it's perfect now. All right. So uh so what has happened is that when the police and the judges are all working in tandem, and but they don't go after rich people. You heard that the former governor was sentenced to 14 years in prison for corruption. He has not been arrested. He has not been put in jail. He's not going anywhere near the prison anytime soon. I can tell you that, right? Mm. Uh, because he's above the law. But there are people who have been in jail for months simply because they were caught within the police sweep. We have some of them. We even have some of them who couldn't just fulfill the bail condition given to them yes, by no, court, no, ten thousand, twenty thousand, and they are there languishing. Last year, I had to pay a few people. I had to pay for a few people to get out of Krikiri prison. And when I met them, these are like amazing young people. They said, "We're looking for a job. We're looking for something to eat." We get caught up, we get arrested. The police ask for our family members to go and bring 10,000. You don't get it, they just shove you through the mobile court system in Lagos, which is an unjust legal system, to Krikri prison. And they are stationed with hardened criminals. And they have no chance of getting justice because the lawyers don't... A lot of lawyers are working to help them, but a lot of lawyers are also interested in big crimes. people it's, see, it's, Mr. Uh, Mr. President, you know, people always say that even if you have this beautiful uh, vision to reform, that are you going to import some people from somewhere else? No, no. We, you because have because to, you still have, have to pick. Import. You still have to pick from you, the rotten you don't system. Have to, you, don't, you don't have to. You don't have how to do you think, people. how easy do you think that will trickle down, like, you know, policy-wise and effective? My even, like, my even you are a Nigerian. I am a Nigerian, right? I want to believe that if you have a chance to save this country, you will come down from wherever you are to help. There are very beautiful judges around the country. I mean, when I say beautiful, I'm just, you know, uh, beautifying the language. That's not the right language to describe judges. But these average, are very average well. uh, who are judges that who are won't Nigerian, be here. And they're like solid judges. There are Nigerians in this country who are judges who want to do the right thing, but the environment is not allowing them to do the right thing because the guy at the top, is not supportive of a just 
fair and equitable system. And they are waiting for someone to come and unleash them on the society. They are there. You'll be surprised. Some of them have joined us already. We have police officers who said, this thing you are doing is what we want to do. Mm. We saw some police officers who were with us in Elorin. Elorin. After they, they, they escorted us from Elorin to a year corny, which is almost uh, 35 minutes away from Elorin. Mm. And when we stopped and they wanted to go back, they said, look, sir, if it is true that you pay us minimum wage of 100,000 naira, we will mm. not be collecting bribe anymore. The reason we that's, are that's, another, is, that's another area. That's another area, right? Yeah. Greed. They said, you know, greed is one of the yes. problems of the establishment. I, I made a broadcast yes. earlier today on that. Yeah. Even with it, so it, much it, money, even with so much money they, they acquire, you can't, you they can't are satisfy not the greed of you can't satisfy yeah, they are the not taking of the care of those who are guiding them. They are not. It is it's what I said. Nigeria has to abandon the greedy and start going after and supporting the needy. Majority hmm. of our people will get by just with a little. But as long as we are financing the greedy people in our system who are only interested in taking the most out of the little we have and leaving mm. nothing for the majority, there's no way we can get anything done in Nigeria. And we have to... So are you, are, you, are you proposing a, a total overhaul of the judicial system where you, start, oh, no you, go, you, go, you go hunting? No from the, that means look, you have to go hunting. Like People always tell me, sure, I don't say what you will do until you get there. But my conscience will not let me tell you. Yes, because you have to tell us how you're going to do it. Yes, this time my around. My conscience will not no, let see. me sit down here. Yeah, not when you my get there. Will not let me sit down here, my ego, and not tell yeah. you what I will do for Nigeria so that I get there. Because if I don't tell you what I will do, a lot of people will not believe me and they will not step out and vote for me. Yes. When we went to a lorry and we said we would jail some person. Yeah, some people say, oh, no, don't jail him. And I said, what do they do to people who rob banks? They go to jail. Mm. What do you do to a person who robbed the state and start sending his children to school in London, whereas the children of poor people cannot find a school to go to? What do you do? You send them to jail. I'm not saying mm. I'm going to grab him and send him to jail, but we have enough evidence to say this man should face the law. That is every country that has developed in the world has had to deal with the people who put them in a state of misery and penury. Now, it let me put it this way. Let me put it this way. Let me put it this way, yes. comrade. Is that, uh, you see, uh, one of the things that we always sometimes miss in our attempt to, to mend this wrecked system eh, is that uh, we forget yes. the impact of what policy formulation and implementation plays in this regard. Yes. When you want to reform judiciary, there are some laws that these guys, they are, even, they are not even laws. They are just like bylaws they, they, they inserted in our constitution that protected them. I will put your own arm. Have you started studying some of these laws to see where let's, and where let's, we let's, need let's, to use let, executive let me order? To you. You know? We've checked out the entire Nigerian legal system. There's no one that allows a judge <laughs> to twist mm -hmm. the cost of justice to suit the rich against the poor. In the fact, poor. there's nothing more dangerous than a corrupt judge because mm. a judge is entrusted with granting the freedom of the innocent, right, and the yes. guilt of a criminal. But mm. when the judge turns it around, you find the innocent caught up Guilty. within the system, punished, and you find the criminals controlling the system. If our judges were doing what was right before now, so many of the criminals you have now in the Senate as governors will not be governors. Because right. interestingly, a lot of them have been caught within the legal system before now. But they have been able to bribe them their ways because they're able to uh, they're able to manipulate and game the legal system. And that's how they became who they are today. Right? So we should expect, we should expect a murder. judiciary reform uh, proposal from the executive if you eventually oh, no, be the no, no, president. No, no. The executive, the, the, look, i give you an example. One journalist in Ghana took down about 20 judges. Just a mm. journalist. That's right. He set them up, and they were collecting bribe as he was doing it. When the thing came out, it became a movie. Everybody went to the theater to watch it. The judges, some of them had to resign, but the ones that refused to resign, the system had to push them. It's, mm. it's very easy to get rid of corrupt judges because it's a matter of the policemen, the year So that we can, we, can, we can at least, we can at least have a system, it, right? And this is why like capacity is important. This the is injustice in Nigeria is, 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 
this is this is why a leader that knows what he's doing is important. But you know me. I don't even need to work on judges. I already have their dossier. I cover ju the judiciary like nobody that's, else. That's true. That's true. So somewhere in the recesses of my laptop or in the cloud, mm. all the judges, I know what they do. The best way to catch Nigerian judges, to know the most corrupt Nigerian judges, is to look at tribunal judges, the judges mm. who have been involved in the election petition tribunals. That is where you catch them. I have all of them. You know, those are the worst judges. The judges who are involved in election petition tribunals are the ones who have been engaged in a worst form of corruption. Some of them are not like that, but there are only very, very few. It's just infinitesimal number of judges. The rest, they built mansions, bought huge cars. They've made a lot of money. And the truth is that the evidence is open. It's in the open. You don't need to even look too far. You will find it. You find the kind of cars they're driving there. The huge watches they have in their accounts. That doesn't, that doesn't uh, qualify with what yeah, Exactly. So if you're a judge that's receiving certain amount of money, I Okoro, Okoro, find one on a, on a lighter mood, on a lighter mood, comrade, right? Okorocha, I mean, Okorocha told us that there is no man on earth that yes. can survive on his monthly salary alone. So, yeah, yeah. and the seven, 740,000 era, he made us realize that each go, I mean, a governor of a state in Nigeria earns, uh, Several and forty, I mean, several and fifty thousand naira. So we now know yeah. now. So which means yeah. every governor amassing all this, so we, we we can able to trace the source of all this, all this exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so because we go back to the book. And if you are in, if you are earning a million naira per month, and suddenly mm. we found that you just built a hundred a hundred million naira uh, house, then, then, then it's easier for us. The job to just is make up, easy up, for yeah. the officer that's investigating. He just pull you in and say. We have reduced, we have removed your salary from the house you built. So I'll tell us where you got the balance. Got the rest. Case closed. Hmm. The same thing with the uh, lawmaker who bought a hundred, hundred million dollar car for his wife for her bad day. It's easy, you know. And so, then he gave, you know, then he gave, the rest? he gave, to he gave uh, okay. some rights to some youth as well to also earn something from the street. Yeah, but that's just by so, the way, anyway. So let's go to the next it. one. So it's, people, it's, people it's, are eager to ask you lot. It's judge. Yeah. It's the, I mean, the justice made easy. Yeah. Yeah. So people are eager to ask you a lot. So I'm not going to block them. I'm not going to make this just about me. Well, I told you I've got uh, arranged uh, questions here, but I'm just going to ask one more. Then I'm going to start picking from them or start receiving phone calls to save our time. Yes. So there's something about food security. The last time you were here, we discussed about uh, the Buari trip to Washington and what transpired and yeah. the eventual consequence of that in the next uh, few months in Nigeria. So now, as, a, as a, a candidate, as an aspirant, aspiring to lead Nigeria, because we are currently at a, very, at a crossroad now, or, you know, the, I mean, quagmire or something. So anyway, food security is very important. We used to be able to feed ourselves and feed mm -hmm. Africa. But until when these Marauders uh, invaded our land and destroyed our land, destroyed our farmers, discouraged our youths from seeing prosperity in agriculture. So you as a young person, we know the animosity, we know the, you know, we know the capacity of what uh, an agro economy can be for a country like Nigeria. North, mm -hmm. west, south, east, everywhere. Middle belt that used to be our food uh, basket of the country. Benue State is currently... God help them. So we have a risk, security risk in our food production everywhere. Middle so Bell, now I want to make it, uh, you know, clear that, uh, you know, can we begin industrialization when we say we want to, we want to uh, bring in an agricultural revolution in a government. So I want to, in my own view, I want to have a clearer picture of what type of revolution are we going to see in, agri in our agriculture? Because I've got this an idea. And the idea is this. True, revolu I mean, a true agricultural revolution, we can actually industrialize Nigeria. You know, I've got this beautiful plan about cottage industries being powered on each farm in every settlement in Nigeria and villages surrounding these, I mean, surrounding these, set I mean, these farms can get access to easy power supplies 24-7, increase production, mm -hmm cut down the uh, cost of a uh, living, and eventually bring more money to government. So you, as a young aspirant, you as a young aspirant uh, aspiring to lead the country, 
what type of agricultural revolution should we look forward to in piece by piece, you know, bit by bit? Break, break it down for us uh, in a nutshell, sir. Uh, so it's, it's very straightforward. Hmm. We need to grow our own crops. We need to grow our food. We have to just go plant trees. We need to plant crops because the land, the arable land is there. What is sad is that Nigeria is only growing 70% of its arable land space, hmm. right? Because we have been spoiled by this lazy oil economy where it's rent seekers just share money. Hmm. And agriculture is not just planting cashew and cocoa alone, you know, it involves fishery, ranching, right? And so many things that comes with agriculture these days, some of them you don't even know. Agriculture is also not about what you consume. Agriculture has also become a source of energy. Mm. Right? Ranching, for example, if we do it right, can help us generate 1,000 megawatts of electricity. That is from cow dungs alone. And beside cow, when the cow dungs are done with generating electricity, the waste from there becomes fertilizers. But what is lacking are three basic things. One of them is integration. Now, how does a farmer get to his farm without roads, rural roads? And how does a farmer take out his products to the next market where he can sell it and use the proceeds of money to take care of him or herself and send the children to school? We don't have that. How does an agricultural, uh, how does a farmer get the loans they need not loans that are tailored or channeled towards party members, but loans that are available for everybody that is eligible for it at low interest rates. Another thing is processing. It is not everything we grow these days that needs to go to the market. Some you can process right there. So we can have like mobile agricultural processors moving around to help you grind your pepper dried right there put it, and before you know it, it's in Malaysia, it's in America, it's in Ireland, it's in Scotland. Uh, do you know also that it's a matter of policy, and some of it is also diplomatic, international. Nigerian farmers, to send yams all over the world, now have to go through Ghana, because Ghana is the only country accepted by the U.S. and mm. some European countries to have a decent transportation and export system because our export system is messed up over here. If you take a yam to be exported out of the, I mean, sorry, the, uh, the port in Apapa for three months, they will not get to the place where it will be exported because we are congested in Lagos. There are trailers that are waiting from, uh, from Oshoji lined up all the way to the port. They can't get there. That's from Aujua Legba to the port. They can't get there. Why? Because our leaders don't know what they are doing. There are opportunities to set up ports in Calabar, in Wari, in Koko, in Olokola, in Ondo states, in somewhere in the southeast, but they won't do it because it's not profitable. And anything that is not that doesn't bring suffering for the Nigerian people, leaders are not interested in it. They like to show you that if you suffer, you will appreciate them. <laughs> right? So we don't have opportunities to import and export. We only have a few ports that are functioning. A country of 790 million, uh, I'm sorry, 190 million people, or 198 million people has just a Lagos port that is capable of functioning. The other reason why they keep the port like that is because the articles of this world, the owners of Intel, that is their port of and the, and the, and the so waivers the and the waivers for the likes of yeah, and the waivers. As well. I wanted to get to that one. Importation. Article will not be able to control everything, you know. And this is the same article that is talking about restructuring. If we restructure Nigeria, he will lose control over our ports. So they know what they are doing. But mm -hmm. the moment we have the right kind of leadership with mission, with vision, with clarity of mind and intellect, with exposure, you know that you don't have to practice agriculture in the olden day, the way they do it in the olden days. The subsistence agricultural system we have is actually part of the reason why herdsmen are so effective. Because the people that are affected by herdsmen are people who are growing 1,000 sticks of cassava every year. And then it's just for subsistence. But if you are doing commercial agriculture, the herdsmen and even the farmers can have a, you know, 
a point of agreement where you graze on my land, you pay me some. I can so if I'm incentivized, for example, and I know this is the grazing route, I can go and plant, you know, grasses there for you. If you go use my grazing route, you pay me right there, <laughs> right? right? If you don't pay for, me, I don't for, open the gate see? for you. To also so, break down. So that the, even the grazing, even the grazing route can be a commercial route for mm -hmm. farmers. So I can have a farm that you want to graze on. I will open it. I will open my gate for you if you pay me. You, know, you pay rent. me as you go. If I want, and I will if open I want it to in, sell. You eat. You drink your water. You go. You go to the you next didn't. one. Mm -hmm. It becomes business. But the thing is that we don't have leaders who think progressively about these things. We have leaders who are backward. They are using the 1980 something or even 1965 method to govern in Nigeria of 20. 18 and it's going to, we are going to go into 2019 and we're already halfway into the year. So agriculture, so because people think about agriculture and they think mechanized agriculture, yes, we can have, you know, we can have trucks, we can have uh, tractors, we can have all of that. But there are other ways also that technology has helped us to make agriculture sexier. I mean, agriculture sexier. And one of it is that a lot of plants out there, a lot of seeds out there have been so improved that corn don't have to spend six months again before you harvest and uh, two months corn. I mean, there are corns that can grow and be harvested in two months. But mm. the thing is, who is introducing us to them? Are we doing research? Are we introducing it to our farmers? Nobody. But Everybody there's another thing. To import. There's another thing I will, I'm going to, uh, we have a caller now, but I'm going to ask you quickly. Because uh, yeah. no matter how lofty the idea is, there's this always... Uh, Sorry, one sec. Um, good afternoon, uh, my caller. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Ola. Uh, Ola? Yeah. Ola from uh, London, or where? Yeah, from UK. Okay, so UK. But just yeah. give me one uh, one minute, please. Let me quickly ask this. There's this barrier in the settings. It's in how Nigeria is set up. The barrier of the association of shared the money, the governors. You yeah. may have all these beautiful ideas, and you will, you can't achieve them as a federal government. It's, if no, no, they... you know, it's no. Don't say that. Don't say that. We, okay. You can achieve beautiful ideas, but you cannot achieve any ideas if you surround yourself with people who are against progressive ideas. That is what is killing the current regime. The chief of staff is maybe about seventy-five years old. All the members of Kabbalah are old people. They are the people who used to do business the old way. And most of them are actually people who started businesses and their businesses failed. Mm. You know, I know one of them used to be a construction uh, uh, mogul, bullet construction. You know, it's a member of the Kabbalah. His construction company failed. Then you go and put that person to be advising the president. You can never get any rules done mm. in the country. You have people who are newspaper editors and their newspaper businesses failed. And you expect them to support freedom of press. It's not possible. Hmm. You cannot find anybody around President Buhari who has any digital inkling of how the world is going. They don't even understand that we are approaching the era of artificial intelligence where hmm. robots are going to take over a lot of the roles that we are playing today as human beings, including hmm. being a pastor, assistant, washing your clothes for you, carrying out surgery, and all those amazing things that is happening in the world. They don't understand that oil is no longer the most important commodity in the market. And as in another 20 years, we probably won't even have oil anymore to, nobody's thank, buying thank oil. Thank you. I'm plenty. keeping someone, uh, there's someone on the line. Uh, Mr. Ola, yeah, yeah. please, can you go ahead uh, and, uh, you know, ask your yeah. question? Mr. Yeah, Shure is, you know, is listening. Thank you, Mark, because uh, Mr. Shure has done a lot. Within just a few months, he has gone places which uh, Contenters like um, Kelado, Doye, Mugalu, they do not even know that they have that chance to, you know, go about. I don't know what they are doing, but um, Mr. Shore, please, you need to rest at this, just for two days, just take a break. And then when you become president next year, please just get rid of the ballot box vote. By now, we should have e voting. The ballot box has been used for eight years to cause destruction in this country. So please keep voting. Just have that in mind. And then the diaspora voting too. So that's what I just want to say. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ola. 
and uh, we appreciate your contribution. Thank you. Uh, we have another caller. He's asking about uh, how to face out ballot box because ballot boxes have caused enough destruction in Nigeria. I so agree. To come I to agree. power, within, what are you going to do? Within our, within our movement, we already doing digital voting. So okay. we should move Nigeria quickly to an era where people can vote with their cell phones. Hmm. Yeah, we have a caller, uh, another caller. Your name, please. My name is Niyi. I'm calling from Lagos. Niyi calling from Lagos. Uh, so please, go ahead with your question, sir. Actually, I want to really appreciate Mr. Sowai. I uh, actually start believing in him. Hello? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So I really want you to put more effort on it. And, you know, I'm also converting for people to come and join us. We are taking back Nigeria from this, uh, our current government uh, because we are not really, I don't believe in them anymore. I... Actually, want to at least do more effort. Let I really appreciate for he, he can even come to us. Uh, in Lagos, we still need him around. The okay, next I go do. I can do it at the same from my own end. Okay. I want you to spread that uh, information. Let them know to the grassroots. Let them because most of these people that are not on the internet, they don't really know. Let them go around. Let's take our country back from this world. Thank you very much, Mr. Nee. Is your deal loud and clear? So that's a message from the people of uh, Ikorodu and all those areas that are not on the social media. Ibute Meta that are not on the social media. That uh, what are the efforts? Yes, efforts putting in place to get to them and make sure this uh, take it back message gets to the nooks and crannies as uh, everyone uh, would expect. I've got another caller here. You just answer the two together. Um, good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. Um, I think uh, that is you not that call. Um, hello. Uh, sorry, one sec. Oh, have you lost him? Uh, okay. So, hello, good afternoon. Yeah, hello, good afternoon. All right, your name and where you calling from, please. Uh, my name is Chris. I'm calling from... Uh... Manchester in the UK. Uh, you're welcome, Chris. Uh, please go ahead with your question. Yeah, um, mine's not really a question. Yeah, I've, uh, I've, 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 I've been following Shoray and the other guys. Um, uh, as a Magalu, I'm not sure how to, to pronounce them. <laughs> and uh, and Fela do it to it. Now, the thing is this. Now, you guys are doing, I, I, I really, I really uh, appreciate you guys. You guys are really taking up uh, uh, the whole thing. You, you are at the forefront of pushing uh, the youth into positions of leadership. And we only hope that people like you ex excel and take us to where we want to be. But my only, my only, uh, what, what I'm scared of is this. Now, there, there seems to be a lot of you. I know we're just at the start of our uh, preparations for lectures and all that, campaigns and all that, but there seems to be a lot of you. Now, you have a, a huge youth followership. A lot of people who want a change of God, sort of. Now, at the end of the day, we're going to have a situation whereby three, four of you are, are fighting for the youth force and all that. And that might limit your chances. Now, the, the Oh, we lost him. I think uh, he was uh, trying to make a point on uh, what you have done so far. And uh, I don't know what you wanted to add there, but we, maybe we should take the the last uh, caller before this one on uh, your effort in the local rural area as much as you have done for now. Maybe we should take that before we take another call. Yes, uh, thank you. It's uh, we're, we're all over the place. Um, you probably have seen a video in uh, uh, Cross River State where we went to Bakasi uh, and we drove to another local. We passed three local governments to get there and also stop at the banks of uh, uh, the Cross River itself. So nobody, and I'm not saying this to denigrate others who are also running, uh, has done as much as we've done in the last three months, reaching out to the grassroots. And 
when people say to us, how are you going to get to the grassroots? The grassroots are there. They are willing to see you. They are willing to touch you. They don't bite people. They don't eat you. They just want you to bring your ideas to them. And we've been to them. We've stopped by everywhere. We've I saw that of Dan Bakasi. And he's, it sincerely touched me. Yeah. Like, exactly. I could, and then the story, the story after that, you know, paying for the, for the family of the bereaved to bury their yeah, dead. Yeah, yeah. So and we, at the we, same we, time, we paying for pay, the we, upkeep yeah. of the little baby. So that's baby, touching, yeah. you know. It's, I can't call that political gimmick, you know. It's something it's that not, I just... It's not. I just, I, I, it I it happened to I, you, know. It happened to you unprepared. So how much yeah. of this do you have to, like... Do you really handle every now and then from everywhere you've been to? Oh, we, we, you have to handle it. You, we handle all kinds of things every day. And it's just, even for us, it's very surreal to meet people who ordinarily you thought didn't know what was going on in the country, mm. who would say to you, like, hey, you know, I just want you to be the president so that I can send my children to school. And like mm. I said, some of them include police officers, army officers. We met a soldier. And I think it was uh, somewhere near Abba. I went to see. Sorry, we have places. a caller. Uh, sorry, my caller. Hello. Uh, hello. I think uh, we lost him. So you lost that. Call. We have another. So we have another soldier, as well. This soldier to... said to us, "When we okay, said, but you can't be partisan." He said, "No, no, I don't care. I, I like you, and I want to support you." He was carrying a gun. He said, "We have to be partisan this time around because it's our mm. future that is at stake." We are the ones who are sent out to get killed. And if mm -hmm. we don't have leaders who can give us the right kind of protection, we are Hello. killed. Yeah. Hello, we you have know. a caller here. Came out. Uh, can you just please uh, hold on for a second, please? Uh, Mr. Okay, Shawara is uh, talking. Yeah. I'll call on you in a minute. Okay, no problem. I was talking and the call got disconnected. Oh, That's I fine. see. Now we can hear you. Just hold on a minute. Uh, continue, comrade. Yeah, continue. You're telling us about so, so, the soldiers, yeah, the soldiers. Yeah, the soldiers said, look, I am not, I am not going to be non-partisan here, I'm sorry. Don't tell us not to be non-partisan. <laughs> we support you and we want to say that we support you. He was carrying a gun, he was in uniform. He didn't, he said, you know, we're going to dare the consequences of what it takes mm. to support you. We just want you to let you, we just want to let you know that we know you and we support you. And mm. that was very touching. That's the same everywhere we've been. Yesterday, we were in Wari, you know, and we went to the palace of the Ulu of Wari, and the conversation was the same. The Ulu of Wari said, look, you know, they've just jailed the governor, and I hope they jail more. That endorses our position that people need to go to jail for looting the Commonwealth of Nigeria. So, but before now, even traditional rulers would not say those things. But they are gaining the confidence to even speak through to power because we are bringing our messages to the inner recesses of power, including palaces. You remember when we went to Kano, the enemy of Kano said, please don't get arrested. Because he That's knew right. that this is how they think. You know, I'm sure they are already plotting. You know, you've seen a lot of propaganda and lies thrown at us. It's not going to stop. But that is not our problem. Our, please, our efforts, efforts are just the camera. The camera, the camera again is shifted. Okay. Yeah. How's so that? We can see your face uh, fully. So, so our concern is how to make this country work, and it's not you. what you were. So I'll, 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 I'll let my caller. Yeah, I will let my caller make uh, his uh, own contribution. Good afternoon, and yes. uh, your name and where you're calling from, sir. Okay, uh, my name is Chris. I'm calling from Manchester. Oh, it's Chris again. Yes. We lost yes. you then. Yeah, you wanted to make a point after you commended him of uh, his effort so far. So go ahead, please. So, so what I was what I was trying to say is this. Now, um, uh, I I look at you. I look at Shore. I look at uh, Fela. I look at uh, Kingsley and all the other young guys who are uh, intelligent guys, enlightened, um, uh, and who would make a better president than what we have presently. But what I'm what, what I'm what I'm really worried about is this. Hmm. At the end of the day, okay, you guys have a lot of beautiful leadership. I would rather have one of you as my president uh, than one of the old uh, old guys. Now. 
we, you, you seem to, you, there seems to be a lot of you and at the end of the day you, the, the votes of the youth might be uh, we might have to share it amongst you all and that way we might not be able to make an impact now the opposition is very formidable Buhari is there he wants to rule till 2023 even though he's not he's, he's performing below par he wants to be there and they will do whatever it takes to remain there now we uh, we don't want to uh, we, do, we don't want to uh, compromise our chances by having to share our votes and all that. Have you guys really considered up joining forces together? I mean, in a situation where we have like one, a of you, one of you as our president, one of you as VP, so that we can consolidate all the youth efforts together. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah, like a, like a coalition of all these yeah, like groups, yeah, yeah, to come yeah. together and present yeah. someone, you know, exactly. and all of us rally around. Yeah, Mr. President, exactly. over to you. Thank you very much, Chris. He's got that now. So. Okay, you have this question all the time. How do you... Sorry, he said he still has one again. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Chris, you yeah, have to I make that one so question. quick, all right? So, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just want to know, see, I, I know, uh, me as a Nigerian living in the diaspora, one thing I'm really concerned yeah. about is the, uh, is, the, is the abuses carried out by our military, uh, uh, our men in uh, uniform, especially the Nigerian army and the Nigerian police. Now, in, in the UK, for instance, it's a crime for you to physically hit someone. Even if you, the police wouldn't dare it because you get sued and all that, you lose your job. But these are things still happening. What are you guys going to do to change that? You see, um, because of, um, I'm sorry to say this, but because of the level of enlightenment amongst us in Nigeria, a lot of people don't even know that the army or the policeman is not supposed to hit you or physically abuse you. We've accepted it as a norm because of so many decades of military oppression. It has affected our psyche. So a lot of people are ignorant of the fact that, look, it is a crime for a military man or policeman to hit you. A lot of people don't know that. And our, our politicians are doing nothing about it because they use these same people to oppress the people. What would you be doing differently in that regard? Because that's an area I'm really concerned about. Thank you. Human rights and abuses from the government officials and all yeah, that. Yeah, he, he, uh, he also yeah, asks yeah. about collaboration you between the candidates. Yeah. And um, uh, when oh, it comes to uh, human rights... My right, caller, uh, we have another caller here. Uh, can you please uh, just give us uh, a minute? Hello. Hello, good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, could you give us uh, just one minute, please? Uh, Mr. Shore is uh, addressing a question. So he has two questions. One is uh, how, how the young candidates can cooperate. No, he's talking about coalition, then uh, human rights abuses yeah. from the officials of government. Yeah. What are you going and to do differently? Coalition is, coalition is going to happen. I think at the point, we'll get to a point where boys will be separated from men in this race. That's, and, that's and this is not I about like... the young people alone. Yes, it's going to be about even the old people who are running. I have a feeling that the people who are promoting Buhari will find out very soon. They can't push it any further. And they will just package him and take him to London as a saving grace and say he's undergoing some medical checks. Hmm. And we won't have to deal with it. That's, that's my hunch. I, I don't know if it is true. I don't have any evidence uh, right now, but that's what I'm saying. Because you can see in the headlines of the newspaper today, Buhari is already saying that he's afraid of the opposition because they have too much money. No, I don't think... The, there's no way in Africa that the people that have the most money is not the ruling party because they have the treasury to, they have to the mess most around. Uh, with regards to human rights... But maybe because uh, Buhari refused to steal, you know? That's another well, narrative. Never, to speak. That's Buhari another narrative. never have refused so maybe he refused, to steal. I mean, because he refused to steal, so he has no money to Buhari, push election. Buhari cannot refuse to steal. Buhari is the kind of guy who may not steal directly, but who will accept a stolen good. That's Buhari for you. You can steal from him as long as he's not the one that did the stealing, because then it increases his deniability. I didn't do it. Uh, but that doesn't mean that he's not surrounded by thieves or he won't accept stolen goods. Otherwise, goods, it's yeah. obvious that he might find it difficult to be where he is today. And uh, the second question is... Um, About abuses. What do you, My right abuses. abuses. Uh, I, by the police and the I, military officers in Nigeria. I've covered, I've covered human rights abuses. I've been a victim of human rights abuses. I've been a victim of torture. I know how they do it. Uh, they do it because they can get away with it. One of the things we have to do is to put together a central 
you know, independent human rights uh, commission. And we can do it through the existing structures where they are free to go into any prison, any police station, uh, to check who has been detained there, to get alternative information. The other one is data. To force policemen in Nigeria to put into a central data system, everybody's arrested as soon as they're arrested. We provide them with a laptop. Them, so we know where you are keeping We you. must put it there and explain what the person did. Anybody we get to the police station, we can't find their data in the system is a free person. And the police officer, if they find out that they deliberately don't do it, will be in trouble. It's as simple as that. And the other part that we need to do is we need to stop our military men from wearing uniform and just going into town to play. Power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. That's the well-known so, Now, we have a caller so here. Just... We have a caller on the line. And uh, I'm going to, please, uh, call her your name and where you're calling from. Sorry. Yeah, um, my name is uh, Larry. Larry. I'm calling from, uh, yeah, from Sweden. From Sweden, okay. Yeah. Well, um, I'll start this way. Uh, there's no doubt about it. We're winning this. Hmm. But uh, my worry is this. When Brian came on board the other time, Hmm. He was just telling us what he would do, just like the uh, show is telling us. Uh, my concern is, uh, is always about when he gets there, how can I or how can we be sure that he's actually going to do exactly what he's telling us? Or can we take him to the shrine or show go or could there be a document he would sign so that when he gets there, he's not going to change? Because you don't believe so much in worry. I know this nonsense the man is doing. He's so depressing that I don't really want to get in politics and all these campaigns to the day. But we've got to do it. This is what we enjoy in London. And we want people back, back, back home too to see that Look, you can enjoy good life. You can have electricity. You can have this and that. So I don't have problem with sure. But how about others that are listening to him that are concerned that oh, we had to send the three years ago? What how is he? How what what is exactly is he going to do so that we can be sure all he's telling us he will do it? Thank, thank you, you. thank you, question. thank you, uh, Larry. It's about the oath of office. And uh, what type we should take from him to, to keep his word. Thank you very much. Let me take one more call and then uh, you answer that. And to the viewers who are a little bit feeling, uh, what do you, sorry, hello? Hello? Well, I'm just going to keep it at that. So to the viewers who think uh, I'm more or less interrupting the, the guest, well, the transmission is more or less delayed from both ends. So you can't expect it to go accurately. So it may sound like I'm interrupting him, but uh, you should understand the fact that it's because of the transmission from the you know transmission transmitting between us, uh, you know. So that's why it's like that. So uh, the last caller asked, "What do, would you like to give as a guarantee or as a collateral to everything you have been promising?" He suggested that maybe we should take you to Ogun Shrine. So that uh, you go and swear to an Ogun and say everything I am saying, I will do, I will not take your cover. That was what the last caller requested. So, could you answer that quickly before we take another one? If, if you know of any Ogun uh, priest, Amadi Oha, Chongo, Obatala, all of the African gods that people can be afraid of, <laughs> perhaps we should deploy those. Uh, the truth is that. Uh, People are not afraid of those gods anymore. If they were afraid of it, Nigeria would not be the way it is because people are swearing at them with all these gods, and they are get they are, they are doing better each time. Some of them are even protected by these gods, you know. Exactly. The of these of gods. Have a group they, they they for them. They are pastors, the imams, marabou all over the place. So here is the solution: it's not some Ogun god or something. It's about pedigree. It's about integrity. The question is. It's a guy who used to fight bad guys who will not be afraid to go to Nigeria, able to do what he believes he can do. Did he fulfill his promise when he started Sahara Reporters, even though I never made a promise to anybody? But the moment Sahara Reporters said, 
started and we said we'll use it to investigate everybody that is stolen in Nigeria. 12 years later, there's nobody who's in doubt about that. And some of the people who are now worried are like, they used to be worried about my safety. Because there are some people who are not even political who will never come to Nigeria because they just believe that they will eat them the moment they enter into Nigeria. But I'm here with them. I'm making pronouncements. We are addressing rallies. We are having engagements. We went to places like Ilorni, talked about the man who is the landlord of the place. We went to Worry yesterday. We talked about all the criminal elements there who are politically uh, holding down the, con the state of Delta. And people welcomed it because that's, that's what they want to hear. Let me explain to you, and I should tell you this. There's nothing difficult to do about making roads. There's nothing difficult in putting hospitals together. You know, There's nothing difficult in investing in education because we budget for the money every year. But when you I'll, ask I'll, somebody to make roads for you... I'll take this call. Yes. When you ask somebody yeah. to make roads for you, and you ask them to go and build your house, a house first, why would you... Yeah, hello, roads? my caller. We have a caller, Mr. President. Uh, your name, sir, where are you calling from? My name is Kingsley. I'm calling from Sunderland. Uh, Kingsley from Sunderland. Please go ahead and make it brief, sir. Uh, Mr. Shure is listening. Okay, I want to just um, thank Mr. Shure for his uh, interest to change the fortune of Nigeria. Um, our country has been a mess from this old politician and we are all shedding tears from what they are doing and their non-action uh, you know, towards salvaging Nigeria, even in our wealth and everything Nigeria has. But I want to make it clear to him, I have so many um, points I, I need to hit. First, we have uh, a lot of young people who are coming for the presidency. I would suggest that if they can work together. Yeah. Really you said you have many points. Uh, Mr. Kingsley, uh, if you are talking about yeah. coalition, he's already been asked that question and he's answered it. He said there's probability for coalition. But when the time comes, yeah. we'll separate men from boys. So if yeah. you have any point, maybe you should just give me another question and uh, we'll use your own time, you know, judiciously, yeah, yeah. Let, if you let don't me, mind. Let me, let me, let me, let me tell him my other thing. Please. Okay. Just one more thing. Yeah. The other thing is, for you um, coming to South Nigeria, see it as a big, a big um, opportunity, like a, a lifetime opportunity. And I want, I want him to just know one thing, that if he does something significant, Nigeria will remember him and his generation forever. He knows. So I, I know, I know he that, knows yes. Because right now Nigeria is messed up. A little thing you do might not be significant for people to see. But there are some specific things you can pick on that will leave a lasting legacy for him hmm. and his generation. So I want him to put it at the back of his mind that it won't be an easy run, but he can make a big difference in Nigeria. And Nigeria will be great for him for, for that. In thanks for that. Th th thank you very much, uh, Kinsley, for that. Uh, I'm going to pick uh, one question online among our viewers. I'm, in fact, I'm going to put more than one uh, from uh, Sheun Akin Lotom. Uh, my caller on the line, can you just uh, give us a minute? Uh, I'll get back to you, please. So, uh, Sheun Akin, Lo, Akin Lotom, uh, his question is, what are you doing about publicity? Millions of Nigeria still don't know you. Is there a way national debates can be organized during prime time? You need a bigger well, I think uh, it's about the publicity and the rest of that. So let me take this call. You can add it up. When, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, good afternoon, my caller. Your name? Hello? Hello, sir. What's your name? My name is Godwin, and I'm calling from Lagos. From Lagos. Godwin from Lagos, is it? Yes, Godwin from Lagos. All right, please go ahead uh, with your question this time around because of time. All right. And uh, what I actually want to say is that uh, uh, some of is a great guy and we appreciate what he's actually doing right now. But I want to say something that the youths of Nigeria are currently scattered between uh, ethnic lines, you know. So, and uh, presently, 
coming out for presidential as a presidential candidate, and we have other people like Fela and Kingsley Mohalo. I think it's still about coalition. Yeah, so I'm talking about if there is any way we youth can have one in order to take back this country, you know, because. Uh, for we to take back this country, we don't we don't need to have this scattered mind like these people are voting for this. We have to have like Kinsley Mohalo, Fela, and so on coming together to build up a team, you know, to give us that one mind and have to take back this country. Come to T19 because we, if we have one voice, we we'll roll like a lion. Thank you. Thank, th thank you very much. Uh, and I think uh, it's still about uh, coalition as well. But in the absence of uh, other, uh, what do you call it? Sorry, my brother, thank you so much for your time. Eh? Uh, sorry, Mr. President. So I've got this uh, very important uh, question as well that I really want you to treat, uh, including the one asked about the publicity up there and the coalition, where we've, we've treated the coalition uh, side of it. So among the questions I put up, like I was going to ask you, is this issue of unemployment in Nigeria among the youth? So presently, we're like about 47% uh, of our population are currently unemployed. About 60 to 65% of us are either unemployed or underemployed, which means the pay home, the take home pay is absolutely nothing. doesn't even take them home. So now I've got this, like, and recently, we just added another 10 million of unemployed Nigerians, like, you know, those who were employed three years ago and, and they are no longer uh, employed. So how do you plan on locking the door of employment for Nigerians uh, when, when it left? My go, that's also let's, important. Go straight, let's go straight to the point. Uh, if, you, if you recognize what I said about Spicer Heat in the past, which is our cardinal... Uh, program for re-engaging Nigeria with progress, peace, and prosperity. We said that we will do security, and the security sector in Lodrell, we the police just found about 80,000 ghost workers within itself. If we take out the ghost workers, stop paying them, and start paying rape people after they are employed, that's 80,000 people there. We plan to employ 20,000, uh, sorry, 200,000 teachers to go and start revamping our education at the primary and secondary levels immediately. We also have plans to hire 160,000 primary health workers, well-trained, who we're going to. So within these three sectors alone, we're already talking about 300,000 uh, uh, for employment. That's still we nothing. That you know that's that? nothing. Just, just keep listening to me. Okay. We mentioned that we want to do 4,500 megawatts of electricity uh, that's from renewable energy, just to put together the pieces to generate 4,500. We're talking about almost a million to two million people hired. Uh, we've spoken about agriculture. The more hands you put on agriculture, the more employ employment you gain. I mean, the more focus you have on agriculture, the more employment you gain for us. Another thing is to actually use Nigerians to do a lot of work at home instead of hiring expatriates there's no reason why Nigeria should be hiring people from Philippines and Malaysia to come and do under underwater welding here uh, with oil companies where you can do it here. So uh, we also have uh, education. I've mentioned that. I mentioned health infrastructure alone. The number of kilometers of road that needs to be built, power uh, lines, uh, transmission lines I want to build will give us another almost a million people employed. If within the first three years in government, we do we, we are going to we will do what we are going to do. We will have nothing less than five Mr. President. People. Sorry to sorry to really cut in there because sometimes uh, we are getting used to throwing figures, just as usual. Yes. You only yes. know what is I mean what's in that uh, manifesto. This, this one is, million this just is, from these are figures, these one are million just from that. Supported, these it are seems so easy to me. Supported by statistics. These okay. are figures that are supported by statistics. We've, been, we've done our research. Not with people in Nigeria alone, but Nigerians outside of the country. You probably read something this morning uh, about the United States government. And I'm not a fan of uh, the government over there, but particularly the president, where they said that the U.S. economic boom 
has reached a point to where everybody that's looking up looking for a job could possibly get a job. Do you have you heard that? Yes. So the employment rate was so low. There's no big deal about unemployment in this country. When you're not investing in the country, you can't get people employed. And you know how we are here. One person gets employed, he supports 20 people. Yeah. So all these things I mentioned to you are supported by empirical evidence. Uh, what we need to do is to stop giving the money that's meant for development in this country to the greedy people, both in the private and the public sectors. There's no reason why Nigeria should be paying a senator 13 million naira. If, you, if a senator gets 13 million naira every month and in a year, the salary of a senator is going to be cleared by a worker million. any 100,000 if only the person has worked for 11.3 years. That's unquestionable. Hmm. Look, don't let us make it look as if it's impossible to fix Nigeria. Nigeria can be fixed because other countries around us are getting fixed. You go to even Benin Republic there, they have enough money to take care of themselves. Where do they get the money from? From importing goods into Nigeria. The same thing with Togo. How is it that Ghana is able to get it right? And we keep saying it's impossible. It's impossible to find our people's job. Botswana could find its own people's job. They have a very robust economy because they practice transparency. They don't steal the money meant for the country. Who is a better guy to do it for you than a guy who goes after thieves? That's what I do for that's, a living. That's, that's, I'm that's always true. after them. I'm always, and the reason why I risk my life, I risk everything to fight thieves is because I want something to be left for the people of Nigeria to live with, to live by. On a daily basis, on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, on an annual basis, during their lifetime. So, except we start to think that and understand that these things are possible. My ego, you live in a part of the world that your roads, when they get, when they have a pothole, people don't wait for them to become a crater before they fix them. No. So, why do we keep saying, oh, this is not possible? We are playing maybe, into the maybe, hands maybe of the politicians why, that maybe... we want to kick out of power. Yeah, Mr. President, maybe that is why I'm going to take you to quickly touch on uh, women and children. Uh, you see, yeah. uh, recently we've been seeing the feminists uh, campaigning just to uh, make us see the neglect, the little, little things that makes them, uh, you know, a little bit uh, uh, discomfort and all that. So now uh, we have uh, vulnerable uh, women, we have vulnerable men as well, and, uh, you know, children. We see abuses here and there, and you see it is only when they happen that people react, that the society react. There's no clear, I don't know if there are, that they are not being implemented so well, right? I don't think there's any clear court standing <laughs> policy that protects the vulnerable in our system, I mean, our society. Even the physically challenged, everyone is on his own. The, the question you should ask yourself, my and at the same time, let me add this. Who is not this. vulnerable in Nigeria? At the same time, Who is not vulnerable this, in Nigeria? Apart yeah, let me add this. Let me add maybe this. Maybe one percent of the population within the political class, you know. Just, just let me address this quickly. You okay. know, women, children, they are part of our society. They are part of people that have become uh, oppressed and suppressed by our society. Children, in particular, is heartbreaking. Hmm. What do we need to give our children? We need to give them education. We need to give them security, sanitation. They need help because children, children fall sick all the time. Hmm. And it needs to be, there needs to be something that take care of them. I, we've all been, you know, kids before, and we know how frequently we fall sick, especially in a society where malaria is ravaging everywhere, mosquitoes everywhere. Hmm. So, if all of the needs of children are catered for within the Spicer Heat program that we have, which is security, you know, power. I, you know, power is something as simple as your children being able to do their homework when they get home because there's electricity, right? Hmm. This, those simple things we take for granted. When you sit down in the part of the world, I come from the part of the world where I've been for 19 years, where we take these things for granted. We should not take it for granted that we can also make it possible to do these things. I'm telling you, they are doable. Hmm. But the politicians in Nigeria want you to believe. They want you to keep promoting the cynicism of things are impossible. The thing they tell me is that, oh, when you get there, you'll find out that all these things you are promising will not be possible. I said, but when you when I get there, if I know that this is not possible, I will say it and expose why it's not possible. The reason this is not possible is because when you guys got there, you told us you are going to offer sacrifices, but you are building mansions. Hmm. You are stealing money made for people in the refugee camps and internally displaced people. You are 
enjoying the same kind of lifestyle that people you drove away out of power enjoying. You're getting in jets and flying jets all over the place. You are killing people politically uh, because they disagree with you. Everything you repudiated that made people voted that made our people to vote for you is what you are repeating in Nigeria. You yeah. as bad as the old guys, and they tell you that yeah, you know, sorry. You know, we came with the PDP people, and the PDP people are the, the PDP people in the APC are the ones doing the bad things. But there's no truth to that. APC people are bad. It doesn't matter whether Obvious, the, I have, the, I have the APC caller, yeah. or PDP people. Uh, sorry, I think uh, I lost that. Um, I have a caller here. Good afternoon. Michael, you have to recognize that by 3.30 we have another meeting. Yes, I have, to, I, know. Every day. So I have every day. And uh, that means that uh, we have uh, just eight minutes uh, left to go. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I, you know, I enjoy your show. You've done so well. Like, yes, it's like I'd love to day. stay here all day. And I think we should have a marathon uh, show where we're just there all day, taking uh -huh. questions and having conversations. Yeah, that's good. Uh, my caller, your name and uh, where you calling from? You're gonna be our last caller this yes, afternoon. Uh, sorry, your name again. Okay, uh, Mr. Temitokwe from Germany. Please go ahead with your question, sir. Um, the question I want to ask, uh, like I've mentioned to Mr. Shore, is that um, we, all of us, understand that it's a missionary man. Hello? Yeah, go ahead. Uh -huh. So, as we know, all these things we say, it takes a mind who has studied Nigeria, who knows our problem, who knows what is going on, to bring up this idea. He has, he's full of ideas. To implement his idea, he's so big. The people that are saying that cannot do it, they, they, don't, they don't understand what they are saying. He is capable to do it. To achieve all things. But my first fear is this. How is he going to get the money to run election for the seat of presidency in Nigeria? That is number one. We see operate the kind of system whereby we spend so much to to to, 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 to conduct, I mean for any aspirant to, to contest and win election in Nigeria. Yeah, please. Uh, yeah, uh, please. You need to to wrap it up. We only have uh, just five minutes now to to okay. release him, please. Why that is there today? Yeah. I cannot lie. I cannot lie to us that he didn't spend up to hundred billion before getting that. Where did he get the money from? Hmm. So, so that's funding. Now, it's my fear. The money to run him. He, he has been going around Nigeria. He knows it's not easy. Yes. So if you please. Work on that aspect, work on that area. Funding, yeah. And, and we see him becoming the president of Nigeria very soon. Amen. So uh, thank you so much, sir, uh, for your for your own contribution there. Uh, so, Mr. President, I'm going to make this a two-edge uh, of a sword now because I know you are going to have to wrap up. So you take his, con I mean, his own question that borders on uh, you know, funding. And then you'll give us a closing remark that I want you to also include the encouragement and, a, and a, you know, and a clarion call on the rest of the youth that you are running for president. You are not running for Senate seat. People need to run for Senate seat. Some people need yeah. to run for House of Assemblies. So many need to run for governors. Mm -hmm. So if you have the courage yeah. to aspire to be president, you should have a word or two for them to run and aspire for something. And in order to balance this whole battle across Nigeria, you can't be everywhere. So please, uh, the question about funding, and your closing remark quickly. So, with regards to funding, we encourage all our competitors to support us. We now have a Nigerian account where you can send in Naira if you have Naira to spare, and it's been encouraging. People are sending a thousand Naira. I love that. A uh, thousand Naira each, and so far, I think in three days, we have almost uh, we have we are both a million Naira. We could do more than that uh, on our GoFundMe page. I think at the last count. Uh, we now have uh, almost fifty thousand on GoFundMe. Yeah, fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we our goal is to get more money than that. So we want people to own and fund the process. You cannot 
you cannot have this taken care of. If you don't support the process, we still have that problem. Nigerians still don't like supporting causes, uh, except in some cases they feel like, oh, you know, what is it that... And you can't blame them. Uh, we're close to 50,000 on GoFundMe. Yeah, it's because our society uh, have become a place where people get scammed, and even when politicians make promises, they don't uh, fulfill them, and people feel like it's a waste of money to support any political endeavor. They rather support other things or support their families. So where you can support that, funding is very crucial, but it's not the end of the world. I have to tell you that we have made the most impact spending the least amount of money of all the candidates that are out there today, and I'm saying it categorically. We have done our research and known how much some of the other candidates, even some of the young people are spending on publicity a lot. There are millions. We spend little. We do the publicity ourselves. You know, we rely on great people like you uh, right. to amplify our voices. And we have a Take it Back TV now online. And we're doing a lot of innovative things to reach out to people and physically go out there because we have stamina. We have stamina to do this. Uh, to reach out to people, we ask, we take questions, we ask questions. Sometimes people are surprised. Then they'll be worried about me. How are you going to be able to do the next one? You have not rested. And then they see me for four hours standing and answering questions. And after that, we, you know, we pat backs with uh, the content the event, we do selfies. And sometimes we even go out and eat with them. People haven't seen this kind of thing before. They've never seen a political process, you know, Building up in a way. No, that, people are saying people uh, are already saying that the oil day your head, like the oil day your head. So whatever <laughs> whatever you do now, people are not going to judge you. That's why they are looking up to you and they are doing everything to bring this together and make yes, it a reality. And, and I think a lot of people no, are looking for the D day. A lot of people are looking for the D day. But my even what is amazing is, and I have to say, that I have to praise Nigerians for this. I didn't know how the people of Nigeria, majority of the young people, got over the issue of religion and ethnicity hmm. and zoning. No, but, I mean, people are not... The last not man that did religion. that, the last man yeah. that did that, right, was Buhari, in 2000, even with yeah, the VC so campaign, like, no, you, you, you see, you see people, me. people, yeah. people he jailed, came out. They said, no, I, I don't care. He jailed me, fine. Exactly. I like him. Yeah, so... So you, are, you, so you tend to be the person that is making that back now. People are people always looking try. for a leader that can lead them out of the state of misery that the country is today. And Buhari was the last person they thought could do it. But now they have an option, they have an alternative, which is someone who actually has, I have a better pedigree than Buhari. Buhari killed people, he jailed people before they forget. I've never killed them, I've always been saving people. I saved my colleagues when I was in, I was in the University of Lagos from getting killed by court members. I saved this country every day, publishing stories about corruption so that we can have funding meant for hospital, roads, uh, education, uh, electricity, so that people don't steal them. So mm. I will say to you that it's up to us to save ourselves. Eh? Mm. As I always love to sing that redemption song, part of redemption song by Bob Marley that says, emancipate yourself from mental slavery, none but ourselves can free our own mind, have no fear for at all, make energy for none of them can stop the time. For how long shall they kill our prophets? Why we stand aside and look? Some say it's just a part of it. We got to fulfill the book. Would you help to sing their songs of freedom? All I ever had, redemption song. I love that song. Thank you. So I like that. <laughs> and uh, it's also like uh, not just redemption song. It sounds like, uh, you know, Revolutionary song. We, the revolution is already happening. It is. We have to redeem. We it's have happened. to have a revolution. So we're going to hear country. more. And more. Revolution. Revolution song, revolution uh, song. Nothing bloody. Nothing bloody. We are not. No, not bloody. You know, you said something. Yeah, you, there was something but you said. A revolutionary, a revolutionary yeah. ideas liberating our minds and physical bodies and souls and nourishing our country and giving us economic power, giving us social status that we deserve and giving us respect and dignity as human beings. Thank you very much for your time this afternoon. I'm still going to bring you back. Uh, like you, 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 you promised the you promise last time that uh, anytime. So thanks for creating Facebook that live. time for us. Facebook Live is our new TV. You know? That's so... our TV. You said something. You said <laughs> this, this revolution will not be televised. Be televised, But yes. it will be streamed live. And it that's exactly live. what is going on. 
That's what is happening. On our own television, in our own mini studio, mobile studio. So it's going to happen. Thank you so much, uh, Comrade Omar Yelisho, for your time this afternoon. And I wish you all the best uh, in, the, in the campaign and uh, the journey ahead. So uh, to my viewers, uh, thank you so much. Are you there? If you are still watching, <clears throat> you should uh, do that uh, in our own, uh, what do you call it, honor. So some people have also been suggesting that uh, we shouldn't make this platform a regular thing for just the Take It Back uh, team uh, in order not to look uh, to the to the other young contestants uh, in Nigeria. Yes, we have been looking at that as well. But like Shawara said, uh, they need to make themselves more available. They need to make themselves more accessible. And they need to make themselves more, uh, you know, uh, ready than uh, we, uh, you know, sort of uh, imagining it for them. So it's been a wonderful afternoon on my Eagles Diary. I enjoyed myself. But at the last of it, uh, the uh, connection, the transmitting transmitter that I told you of earlier uh, took uh, Shawara uh, away. But, uh, However, it's been very wonderful, and we'll keep monitoring the campaign, we'll keep monitoring the, uh, the process, and at the same time, we'll stay woke. Everyone needs to stay woke, like they say on the street, because this time around, they must not use the same technique to deceive us again. And that's why you have to stay woke. Thank you so much for your time this afternoon, and I hope I see you some other time. Tomorrow, I'm bringing Tomiwa back. For those who know Tomiwa, so Tomiwa will join us uh, tomorrow. There is another beautiful program uh, that we are bringing up. It's also a polit political program where we are going to discuss the Green Party and the progress, uh, the progress we've made uh, with the party in Ogun State. So which means tomorrow, those of you who have been asking about Green Party, you will get to know more about Green Party tomorrow. Not only that, some of you will sign up for Green Party tomorrow. I'm from Ogun State. I can only tell you about Ogun State. And I am doing my best. We are doing our best collectively, so to say, to ensure that the youth in Ogun State are given new direction, a new sense of belonging, and their lost I mean, self-esteem, stolen and destroyed by these same criminal leaders, are, uh, you know, watered back and brought back to life. So we are doing our best in Ogun, and you will get to know more tomorrow. You have to join this, this whole thing. You can't save them. Like I've been saying, if you are fighting for PDP and APC, my brothers and sisters, you are fighting for the establishment that keeps you poor and that keeps you powerless. I mean, scared and vulnerable. So if you want to get out of that, take it upon yourself. Take it upon yourself, young, old, women, male, female. Take it upon yourself now. There is no savior coming from anywhere. We have to be our own brothers and savior this time around. We have been invaded long time ago, but we have realized now. Now that we have realized, what are you doing? What are you going to do? And that's exactly what I am doing in my state with other people, like-minded uh, young Nigerians, trying to ensure that those who have lost their self-esteem and defending this criminal enterprise or establishment in Ogun State are brought back and we back to line. Because we need them. We need the number. So we will not let these old people get away this time around. And they can only get away if you fight and if you keep fighting and protecting them. Fighting and defending them means you are protecting them. And if you don't know before, now that you know, should you protect your oppressor? That's the question, and that's where I'm going to draw the curtain. I'll see you some other time. Good afternoon. <laughs>